So the next step is I wanted to go over how you fill out a GIA billing form. So pretty simple at the top here. It's got your club information, name, address, city, state, zip, telephone number, and then the email of your trail administrator. And then you've got to put your grant number in. Now, this grant number gets assigned after you uh, get your grant approval paperwork. And if you remember, when we first set up our billing, we had GIA grants application folder, application forms. And we got a thing called award documents. So when you get your um, grant approved, you're going to get an award document sent to you. It's a PDF. It's all signed. And part of that uh, award document is going to be an official grant number that they assign to you or for your grant. So that is what I am putting inside this grant number that came right off of that approval paperwork. It says a box here, check for cash advance. Um, again, I would urge you if you're going to go for cash advances to talk to the Trails Bureau about the procedures that are involved in that. I have done it once or twice, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not as familiar with those procedures as I once was. So go to the Trails Bureau, talk to them if that's what you want to do. Now, underneath this, uh, this is called GI Grant and Aid Billing Form. I've got three invoices here. For, and I, I always put these in in date order just to make it easy to, to keep organized. So I've got an invoice on 5923. The next thing they want is they want project number, description of work, material used. So I've got my project number, which is P1. White Mountain Lumber is my uh, vendor. And then it was a culvert that we purchased. And it's $670. You notice that they have rate per hour and hours. Under the rate per hour column, you either put the rate per hour, but if it's an item, you put the item cost there. And then hours, it's either number of hours or if it's a single item, then you put one. On 51023, Project 1, we wrote a, uh, we got an invoice from Dan Cordwell, DBA, Kellybrook Farm, and it was hay bales. Rate per item is $5, and there was 25 of those hay bales for a total of 125. On 511.23, Project 1, we had an invoice from Brooks Agway, uh, 50 pounds of conservation mixed grass seed, $190, one bag, total of 190 So as you put this in, the um, form is going to tabulate it for you. But I would just double check to make sure because... I've had issues with these forms before. So just double check your, your uh, math to make sure it's adding up correctly. Then you put the name of the trail administrator who's submitting the form and it's gotta be printed out and signed. Then when it, when it gets sent in, you need to attach a copy of each invoice and each canceled check. So this is the White Mountain Lumber Invoice, you can see the invoice date up here, 5923, the invoice number. And then um, I wrote a little note on here, paid with check 430. Um, this is the, the hay invoice from Dan Cordwell. And then we have a Brooks Agway invoice for the conservation mix. 
And now we have our checks. There was a check to White Mountain Lumber for 670. And you notice it's showing the front of the check and the back of the check. Um, this is check to Dan Cordwell, front of the check, back of the check. And then the check to Brooke Sagway, front of the check, back of the check. So in our bank, essentially we can pull up it shows that we have a canceled check in there. We click on that check number. It pulls up a little window. And then we can either uh, take a screenshot of that window, or in my case, I just print it out to a PDF printer. And then that allows this thing to be a PDF that I can attach to this um, form. So hopefully your bank... Uh, as a similar setup where you've got this window that pops up and then print it out to a PDF printer and then you're ready to rock and roll. We're going to go to the RTP billing form. So again, the very first thing they're asking for is your grant number. And, you know, if we go back to our RTP folders, you'll see that we had... Um, a folder for award documents. So when we got our RTP awarded to us, again, they it comes back all signed and it's got this um, grant number assigned to it. And so that's the, the number you need to put into this billing form. Grant Administrator Steve Smith, club name, address, city, town, state. Now, in this case, uh, we're... We're putting our excavator work and some of our clay gravel under our RTP grant. So they want to know vendor name and items or services provided. So we've got MG Excavation, and they did excavator work. Their invoice date was 5923, invoice number 1764, 12,922, check 386. And then we had some clay gravel, um, 51023, $1,812, check 390. And 511, we had another $1,812 and check 416. Now, the reason that we're having these multiple invoices here is because under clay gravel, I didn't want to go out for bids mainly because I'm looking to work with the the the, the uh, vendors that have the closest gravel pit to my project. So, the, so there's some workarounds on these things I'd like to go through here. So I want to do a review of some RTP bid rules at this point. So three vendor quotes are required for equipment or materials greater than $2,000 per invoice per day. So I'm buying twenty dollars to $30,000 worth of gravel, but what I told my supplier is we're going to have to bill in increments less than $2,000 per day. So essentially that um, that invoice was representing, I think, five uh, loads of gravel. Um, three vendor quotes are required for equipment rental expenses that are greater than $10,000 per project. So in this case, I did have to go get um, three bids, and I have to award it to the lowest bidder. Now, for materials, there is a workaround. Ask your vendors to bill less than $2,000 per day per invoice. You can do this for your lumber yard. You can do this for your culvert supplier. You can do this for your gravel. Just about any materials person. The only time this doesn't work is if you're buying, like, steel for a bridge. And you're buying 
you know, six or eight grand worth of steel. You know, you have no way to really break that up. So you're going to have to get three bids for your steel. Um, as far as uh, a workaround for uh, equipment, there is no workaround for that. As far as a workaround for equipment rental, there is no workaround for that. So if you're going to be spending more than 10K on equipment rental, you need to get three people to bid on it. And then for anything that's bid, the lowest bidder must be selected. The other thing you need to watch out for is when you are submitting invoices for bid items, the bid price and the invoice must match the price and the bid. So let me give you an example. Let's say our, um, our excavator operator says, okay, uh, I'm bidding 150 bucks an hour, you know, to do this job and, you know, it's 100 hours. And then he goes and uh, sends his invoice in. He says, well, fuel went up, you know, uh, since I did that bid, so I'm going to charge you $125 an hour. You know, uh, that's not that's not happening. So I I always tell my bidders, you need to be bidding in next year's prices. You can't bid in this year's prices. You need to bid for next year. And you need to hold that price. If you win the bid, you need to honor that price no matter what. And so far, the, the uh, you know, everybody I've dealt with has been okay with that and, and they've lived up to the deal. Um, as far as your, your proof of payment, you need to write out one check per invoice and the check amount should exactly match the invoice amount. If, if this does not happen, this is going to end up being a red flag to the Trails Bureau. Okay. And we already talked about this, that canceled checks are required for every invoice. A copy of the front and the back of the canceled check is required. Okay, so let me jump back. So we filled out this information on the, oops, I'm sorry, RTP billing form. We filled this out. We have a total of 16,522.24 that were charging to RTP and we hope we'll get paid back by the Trails Bureau, you know, when we send our bill in. So the project administrator needs to sign this form and date it. And then it's gotta be sent in with copies of the invoice. So here's the $12,000 invoice. Here is one of the clay gravel invoices. And here is the other clay gravel invoice. Now, one thing um, we talked about this uh, in prior classes that we have been planning our jobs in loads of clay gravel and, but that needs to get converted to yards. So um, in this case, we had 14 yard loads. If I take my 84 yards and divide by 14, it means six loads. This, this invoice represents six loads. So what you gotta do is you gotta convert your, you know, loads to yards and also the price you need to divide your load price by the number of yards to get your price per yard. Does everybody understand that about clay gravel? Okay, great. All right, continuing on here, this is the check that we paid to MG Excavation, the $12,000. And again, front and back of the check is shown. Um, and then AD Excavating, this is check 390 for his first invoice and check 416 for his second invoice. So that, that's a complete billing form that for RTP.